time for another post movie vlog. This is for one for a much newer release for um specifically Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Before that, before we get too far into this, I do want to do the thing that I should have been doing for last week's uh, loop on the third vid vlog video, which is remind you to click the subscribe button and the note and ring that bell to be let know the next time my videos go live, be they my let's plays, vlogs like or my more involved editing vid edited videos like my perspectives and Depart retrospective. So Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten I admit I'm going to just call the film Shang-Chi going forward, while it is also the name of our protagonist, because I slightly stumble over the name a bit, not because of my of my kind of speech impediment I grapple with, but more because of my background in role-playing games creating a weird series of mental connections. There's a tabletop role-playing game named after the Amalto Musashi book, uh, The Book of the Five Rings, called Legend of the Five Rings. And so Legend of the Ten Rings, my brain wants to call it Legend of the Five Rings, which is completely different. I also have having connection to another major franchise because the Legend of the Five Rings role-playing game, one of the designers on that, was a role-playing game designer by the name of John Wick. I still don't know if anybody involved in the production of the John Wick series is at all aware that before they made those movies, there was a role-playing game designer who co-created the 7th C, Seventh C, and uh, again, Legend of the Five Rings role-playing games who had that name. Unless it's a shadow, that's also entirely possible too. But so Shang Chi. This is, this is a very, before I get into, spo get into mild spoilers, this is, this is a very good martial arts film. It does, like, a martial arts film with some superhero elements. It, it's not quite fight scene editing and shooting in classic Hong Kong martial arts films manner. Which is what was done in, for example, The Matrix, where when the when we came to shooting the fight scenes, sort of partial control of how the fight scenes were being shot, especially particularly martial arts related stuff, got handed off to not handed off, but responsibility for like cinematography and camera play, that sort of thing, became shared with the fight team, uh, with uh, Wen Wu Ping's fight team, Matrix. You, so you sort of have the, the fight director being a co-director of making sure that camera positioning and the fight choreography are working well together so that the audience can see what's going on, can see the fight scene, have, give it a good sense of momentum without doing lots of cuts. This movie still does have a degree of the Western fight scene style of quick uh, quick editing but not to the degree that we got in, for example, uh, Black Widow, which was, I guess i describe as born light in terms of the level, in terms of the camera work and editing of fight scenes. Which is good. I like more Marvel movies, particularly ones that are getting into more kind of hand-to-hand -hand stuff, like what happened, like what they were doing in Black Widow, like what they'll probably end up doing in Falcon and in the Captain America and the Winter Soldier, or um, Captain America Three, can't call it Captain America and Winter Soldier. That one's been or Captain America and the White Wolf. I think is what they prefer. Um, Anthony Mackie's first Cap movie, first movie as Cap. Um, in any case, uh, like if they take some cues from that, or do it like for doing that style of editing. Thing. I appreciate that. Um, it's it's a thing that ha that martial arts films and action films from Hong Kong have done very well for a very long time, and similar films that try to emulate it in the United States have always kind of lagged a little bit behind. 
I blame our tour theory home direct. In any case, um, the acting in the film is very good. Uh, Shang Chi has played cast list. I mean, the actor is correct. Um, for everybody, Shang Chi as played by I'm also speak to say up front. I'm apologizing to everyone in advance for name pronunciation. I have a I have a speech impediment, a mild one related to my tongue that impacts certain phonemes. When I try to pronounce certain phonemes, multiple languages, including English, um, my tongue can't make the shape for the words. That said, I, I some I, I even occasionally lisp it. Um, in any case. Shang Chi, uh, played by Simu Liu, is definitely a, a in terms of my encounters with the character of Shang Chi comics fit him as a I'm not going to say a Bruce Lee type of martial arts protagonist character, but kind of that Bruce Lee, Jet Lee vein of, of letting like actions do the talking. I've never actually read really much of his of the Shang Chi focused books, particularly later stuff, because like after a certain point, the big martial artist in Marvel Comics more or less shift more or less shifted to Iron Fist in partnership with Power Man with Cage. And Shang Chi ended up being more of a supporting character, um, whereas, um, so, but when he was introduced, Shang Chi was an XP of Bruce Lee. No, not beat, beat around the bush. Shang Chi is a product of Marvel looking at what was going on at the time in cinema, and what they were seeing in New York. And going, you need to do some stuff like that. And so you have, so you got Luke Cage as inspired by black exploitation films and also films made by like Shaft and like uh, Superfly, which were made by black creators for black audiences and experience, but also exploitation films often like written or if not directed by white creators then at least produced by white create by white studios with black actors and in some cases a black production team um to capitalize on the success of those films so you had luke cage coming out of that you had a variety of various martial art artists as well um iron fist is one of them and Shang-Chi was another. And at the time of Shang-Chi's introduction, he was, well, again, we're not going to bang on the bush here. He was introduced as being the son of, of Fu Manchu. Uh, and I don't know if this is a case of Marvel thought that Fu Manchu was in the public domain or not, or they had, or they decided to license the rights for them. But that was what they went with. And eventually they and eventually they lost the rights and changed it to a a different character who has less visibility in the MCU, but in the meantime, never really got the Mandarin either. He and we'd gotten River Slattery. We'd gotten Aldrich Kinian, but didn't actually get the the Classical Marvel man, well, not the classical, but the, the conceptual concept of the Marvel Mandarin of a person who is usually depicted as being of a, a of a Asian ethnicity or mixed Asian ethnicity, um, who has ten rings of some variety. In comics, it's finger ring, um, which grant him various powers. In the film, they are superpower, as you've seen. Undoubtedly, materials. They are superpowered bracelets. Um, 
and they just have various abilities in terms of blast and super strength and that not unique abilities for each one. Obviously, we're shifting from doing it from the rings here because we had Thanos. We don't need another guy with a whole bunch of multicolored things on his fingers that give him special powers, especially if it's unique powers for each one, because that just... If they if they did than if they did the that version of the Mandarin, it, I think it would not. I I think it would undermine the movie, or would have undermined the movie. Um. Additionally, this person up uh, version of the Mandarin also, or as he is referred to in the film, um, where he is called and called the correct name, um, Wen Wu. Uh, this version of the Mandarin is uh, also being played by a actor and a very and, like he's well known to me because I watch a lot because I watch you know various John Woo movies that he's been in um, along with films by director like Why um, Tony Leung or to use the whole name. Um, Tony Leung Chu Wai. Um, who is a really great actor. I have really enjoyed him in the movies that I've seen. And also, I can see him in, and I saw him in uh, Hero. He was in Hard Boiled. He's in the freaking in the freaking Red Cliff trilogy uh, or, or duology of forget the correct they don't put the credit information I mean I'm using TV tropes here as opposed to you know conventional get who he Zhao Yu Okay, so he's playing our de facto protagonist of the film, of Xiao Lu. Xiao Yu. So, uh, like, Tony Lung is an excellent actor. I've enjoyed, I'd enjoyed his work be well before this movie. Enjoyed his work before um, Accented Cinema put out a very good video, which I highly recommend you watch, kind of showcasing um Tony Young as an actor and showcasing some other films that he that they uh, they recommend that you check out his work that I can absolutely recommend you watch that video. I will put a link to it in the doobly doo. Um also subscribe to also like, follow, and subscribe to his channel. Their channel. Um it was it was good. Uh, like that 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 video is good and I and by changing what they do with the character of Wen Wu in this film, and without getting into spoilers, gives him a like. It's definitely a bigger level of complexity that we've gotten for most Marvel villains. We're not quite at the at the Thanos level of not 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 the complexity is the. But we're not at your hitting the character. Black Panther. Killmonger, right? Um. And we're not at the Killmonger heavy level of complexity. Where Killmonger is a antagonist who is wrong in his methods, but his motivations come from a place of sincerity. Um, and that worked. And so, like, it, we're not at that level, but 
when Wu the Mandarin has a or when Wu has a serious like has some serious emotional depth to him. And a lot of that gets carried through. Otherwise than that, um Aquafina is is like she is very good in the film. Um she is she is to an extent a comic relief character, but she is a comic relief character with agency and with a significant impact on the plot. And she's also like to the film's credit, a comic relief character I'll just say it like one thing. I'll, one thing I'll spoil before the, the big spoiler break. She's a comic relief character, who is a female companion for the protagonist who survives the film. Like we're like he doesn't get fridged, and we and we don't get a we're killing the comic relief character off to show that it's serious moment. Nothing like that. Excellent. Otherwise, ah. Uh, I, I do recommend seeing this film in the theater. Um, there are some chunks in the film that are clearly meant to be the all right, this this is for the people who paid for the 3D ticket scene. Um, but otherwise, like other than that, it, it, it's a very well done film. I saw this in IMAX. And it has a pretty good way to see it. I definitely recommend giving the film a view and also possibly even, I'm going to be picking up on physical media when that option is available. And for those of you who want to stay away from the mild spoil from mild spoilers, this is a good place to drop off. For those who want some more, more slightly more involved stuff, nothing heavy. Um, on from here. Oh, one more note. Actually, one more note before you all drop off. Two post credit scenes. One after the glit, after the flashy credits. One after the full credits. Both of which have longer term narrative significance i would say to the now with that out of the way so as far as like how the film like mild spoiler thoughts on the film my worry as i'm leading forward like that like one of the, like the kind of questions i had coming into this film is okay how how does this fit into the Marvel universe? How does this fit in, you know, the world that also has Spider-Man and Tony Stark and and Doctor Strange and the Incredible Hulk and has had at least different alien invasions of Earth within the past decade or so. Um, and had half the world's population wiped out and then returned. And it, and it, the answer is moderately well, not just in terms of like, oh, we have a couple cameo appearances, um, from characters from previous films. Um, not like a major cameo. I mean, they are narratively major, but not major characters. We're not having, um, we're not getting a cameo appearance by, for example, our our, our new Captain America um, does not make his first Marvel on uh, Marvel film appearance as Cap um, in this movie. We don't have anything of oh, um, th there is no talk about oh yeah uh, when Wu fought the Winter Soldier that one time. Nothing like that. Uh, so, um, but like otherwise, like it's they do a good job of fitting it in and having it make sense in within the unit. And with those two post credit scenes, it looks like it's building up a couple larger things. I think one of them, like, of a mix of one that's uh, that feels like a Move, like a uh, tie in for stuff, the stuff on the TV side with what's going on with the Ten Rings organization. Like where we're at at the end of the movie does have a certain sense of 
Oh, and we'll probably see some tie-in stuff related to this in future MCU. Not necessarily like Marvel or anything. Um, but Hulk. Um, maybe Armor Wars. I don't know. But that's like that stuff might pop in there. Um the first post credit sequence. That feels like a very distinct tie-in to the Eternals. And I appreciate that, like, in terms of, like, okay. Like, the Eternals has a sense of these characters are off doing, like, in trailers for that, like, oh, they're all off doing their, doing their own thing. And this is partially why they're not in, they're staying completely separate and not encountering with the, any of the made big stream MCU characters in spite of being such, such a big deal. With Shang Chi, this is like this is literally his origin story. He wasn't on the scene before because he's trying to stay low on the radar, because he's trying to stay, you know, out of out of sight and not trying to do a big flashy thing. Now he's in a position he can't necessarily hide it. On the other hand, on the other hand, um. Whereas now he's he's taken his first steps into the larger world, and Aquafita is going to, character Gaty is going to be tagging along, uh, coming along behind, sort of serving as Greek chorus to this whole thing. But there is a definite sense of like, okay, we don't explain in this film what the Ten Rings are and where they came from, but it lays a good couple good hooks where. If it's not explained here, it might explain may have a connection to what's where they're planning to go in the end with the Eternals. Um, we will see when we go from there. Either either the Eternals or with um what they're what we're gonna get in of whatever they're planning to do for Thor or Love and Thunder. In any case, that covers pretty much most of the film there. Um, let us let me know. Spoiler, like mild spoilers slash spoil free. What you thought in the doobly do or in the, in the show notes? Um, don't be a dick. Don't no dropping huge spoilers in there. Um, but you know, like my like if, if if there's something you can't talk around, maybe rot thirteen it. But otherwise, uh, let me know what you thought. Next week we'll be turning on returning to our more regularly scheduled scheduled edited stuff. Nightfall Saga. Okay. Catch y'all later. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 